I think I can buff that out. One of the things about CNC routers that can be really frustrating happens when your spoil board is covered in material and you need to zero your Z-axis to the machine's bed. Today we're going to crack this nut and make a simple platform for our touch plate that eliminates this issue. The material we're going to use for this project is leftover 18mm Baltic birch plywood from the Gobar deck project I made a few weeks ago. Once I've got material set aside, I need to verify the thickness of the plywood to make sure that the simple joint of the touch plate is going to fit nicely. I'm shooting for a friction fit, so accuracy is important, and I need to make a quick update to the model and cam to accommodate the actual dimensions of the plywood. You'll also note that I'm using Visual Studio Code to inspect the cam file that Fusion generated, and I'm removing the final instruction that tells the router to move the machine to its home coordinates. Now that I've updated the cam for the touch plate platform, I'm going to warm up the spindle since this is the first time I'm using the router today. This is a procedure I go through every day before doing any cutting on this machine because it helps distribute lubrication and increases the longevity of the spindle's bearings. With the spindle warmed up and the cam updated, I'm nearly ready to start running some tool paths. I just need to clamp the off cut to the machine bed, fat finger a knob like a noob, and make sure it's not going to slide all around crazy and get all cattywampus on me in the middle of this job. Of the fixture options available to me, I decided to go with simple homemade clamps for this offcut. I'm using them not only to hold the material down, but also as lateral stops to prevent lateral movement. If you're anything like me, having one of your last useful pieces of scrap material wasted because it shifted in the middle of your job, you'll certainly appreciate me not wanting to bust out a fresh sheet of Baltic birch for such small parts. Now that the plywood is fixtured properly to the machine, we can get some cutting done. I'm going to start out with a 3 8 inch single flute compression end mill from Vortex Tool Company. And by the way, I am totally not sponsored, just I really like their end mills. They're great. You might think it a little odd to start out with a cutter that's typically used for profiling or contouring cuts, and you'd be right. That's exactly what I'm going to do. A cut that I normally do as one of my final operations. So why make this cut first? Well. Unfortunately, Fusion and I had a battle with the adaptive clearing tool path where it just wanted to plunge the cutter and start doing its thing, which I didn't really want it to do. I suspect it has something to do with the geometry of this being an open pocket, and this was the only thing I could come up with to address the issue. I'm sure there's a smarter way to do this. I just wasn't smart enough in the moment to get there, and this was my way of saying, honestly, done is better than perfect. To set the work offset and tool height for this first operation, you'll note that I'm using a touch plate for the Y, X, and Z axes. But then I move the touch plate to the machine bed and reset the Z height manually. This is because I set the machine bed as a reference in Fusion for this setup rather than the material surface that you see in a lot of other CNC router videos. It's not that there's anything wrong with one approach or the other, I just don't like gouging my spoil boards super bad because I'm kind of lazy. And, you know, since I'm going to be cutting uh, all the way through this material for my contour pass and my pocket depth in this project isn't a critical dimension, taking this approach lets me cut through the material without gouging the spoil board more than ma maybe a couple thousandths. Uh, and, you know, again, even though it's sacrificial, I'm, I'm lazy when it comes to my spoil board and I want to have it last as long as I can have it last without having to go through and resurface it and ultimately end up replacing each of these pieces of MDF. There are a couple of different approaches you can take to work offsets, but this is the one I'm using for this project. Even though I measured the thickness of this plywood, there's no guarantee that zeroing Z from the material surface isn't going to either cut pretty far into the spoil board or leave behind an onion skin that needs to be cleaned up. 
I have found this to be just the easiest way to get a nice, crisp, clean, you know, profile cut all the way through your material without gouging your spoil board and without leaving an onion skin. The next three operations all use the same end mill, a quarter inch single flute upcut, again from Vortex Tool Company. This is a straightforward tool change that only requires me to reset the tool length offset with the touch plate on the machine bed a single time. Once that's done, the next operation is simple, and like the contour toolpath cuts all the way through the material. It's just two slots for the two 8mm bolts that will be used to attach this to the front extrusion of the machine. You'll notice a little scream on this cut. It's not bad, but it's not great, and it's probably due to some combination of feeds and speeds and maybe some tool stick out. I suppose it could be also because I've got the profile cut for these parts and the end mill is vibrating in the material because it's only held in place by a couple of tabs. This is something I'll have to dig into a bit with this cutter and material combination because it doesn't seem to scream very much in the next operations. Now before we assume that all is well and remove this from the machine, I'm going to test fit the bolt in the bolt slot and an off cut of the plywood in a slot that I cut for the plywood joint. This is a piece from the same panel, and while it fits the first slot it doesn't fit the second one. Let's fix that. Back over in Fusion 360, I'm just going to make a quick edit to the finishing toolpath that brings these pockets down to final dimension. If I navigate to the Passes tab, I'm going to remove a little extra material by setting the radial stock to leave value to a negative four thousandths value. Then all I have to do is save this toolpath, load it in Mach 4, and run the toolpath. The machine will rerun the cut, removing that extra four thousandths of material, and in theory, we should have a nice fit. Looking back, I should probably have copied the toolpath and run it with negative stock to leave just on the pocket that needed adjustment, but in the end, it all worked out. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little, uh, a little wobbly, but the other one's more important, and that one looks like it fits good. A little snug, nice friction fit. Looks pretty good.
Boop. Since I clamped the plywood to the machine, I used tabs in the cam contour toolpath to hold the parts to the waste material. We'll use the router table and a flush trim panel bit to remove the tabs. This is really a pretty great way to remove CNC router tabs. And since, you know, it's a router table and a router, there's really no chance for anything to go wrong. Just set your bit depth and RPM and hit the electrons release valve and Robert is your mother's brother. Dumb. Dumberer. Dumbest. This is about the point where I realized uh, I probably shouldn't have used this on these pocket tabs. So, yeah, since I was dumb when I placed those tabs in that cam uh, toolpath, I'm just going to remove the last few using a black plane. What I should have done is made sure I didn't have any tabs on the parts where the material was milled out in the pockets, which, you know, would have made this operation something I could have entirely done on the router table. It's really not a huge deal. It's just... It really annoys the perfectionist in me. Yep, that perfectionist. So now that my router table incompetence has left my ego bruised, let's skip the part where I smeared a bunch of glue on some wood and overdrove a screw during the assembly. Yeah, that's a real thing. Instead, let's install the little platform on the machine. I'm just using two roll-in T-nuts and 8mm hex bolts with washers to attach the machine to the platform to the channel of the front rail, or something along those lines. Once I have it loosely attached, I can use a straight edge to index the top of the platform with the top of the spoil board, which effectively extends the spoil board surface and lets me touch off an end mill to the platform either visually or by using the touch plate. The only real issue to contend with here is that your spindle and end mill need enough y-axis travel to clear the spoil board and extend over the platform. In my case, it's not an issue, and this works really well, but your situation might be a bit different based on your machine or your machine's configuration.